Hey everybody, Daryl here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Kara X Malice along IG and Augie's route. Boy, and I was just looking at the guide and he has seven chapters in his story. So yeah, he's definitely going to be significantly longer than anybody else's so far. Than, well, than anybody else's period. And Anamoto's was 21, so yeah. I gotta work on getting through that because I do not want to be on this forever. I mean, as much as I love it, I gotta get through it for my sanity because I need a break so I can move on to something else at some point. You know, as far as life direction and what I'm doing with myself. Well, anyway, we were hanging out in the park with Yanagi, chatting about his youth, talking about his delinquent days, and a little girl that was walking by the park got lost. Let's help her out. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Mommy? Mommy, where are you? Huh? When I turned toward the source of the voice and slight footsteps, I saw that a girl had entered the park alone. She looked distraught, like she was about to cry. That's the girl from earlier. Is she lost? I hope nothing happened to her mother. Maybe she got separated from her mother. I can't find Mommy! Mommy! The girl was desperately looking around for her mother. Uh. Whoa. Where are you, Mommy? Ah! The girl had run at Yanagi at full speed and was clinging to his legs now. Oh, <laughs> my Yanagi. Uh, hey, don't cry. We'll find your mom for you. Mommy! Flustered, Yanagi tried to calm the girl down, but it wasn't working. Time to work my magic. It seemed to me that this had stirred up some peculiar feelings in Yanagi. This might be the first time I've seen him so perturbed. <laughs> Guess he's not very good with children. I collected myself and looked directly into the girl's eyes. Hey there, can I ask you something? Did you lose your mommy? <laughs> M mommy isn't here. I was holding her hand the whole time. Okay, that's why you're crying. What's your name? Chiharu Kawamura. Thanks, Chiharu. What's your mommy's name? Haruka! <gasps> mommy! It'll be alright, don't cry. I'll take you to her mommy. Really? Yeah, we don't want you to get lost again, so hold on to my hand, okay? While trying not to scare the girl, I extended my hand toward her. The little girl slowly released her tiny hand's grip on Yanagi's legs, and then grabbed mine tightly. <laughs> there we go. We have transferred ownership. Phew. I could hear Yanagi's sigh of relief above me. His relief at finally being freed overwhelmed his usual decorum. <laughs> I'm impressed, Hoshino. Well, this is basically what my day job consists of. Maybe you're cut out to be a hostage negotiator. <laughs> I don't know about that. Dealing with suspects is different than children. That's true. Still, well done. While Yanagi chuckled in admiration, the girl looked at him. Huh? The girl stared intently at Yanagi with bright eyes. Then, she suddenly thrust her hand at Yanagi, as if to form a chain between us. Give me your hand, uncle! Uh, uncle? Yeah! <laughs> uncle. I suppose that's probably how old I'd be to someone her age. Uncle, huh? No, wait. Uncle? Fine. Just please stop calling me that. <laughs> oh, poor Yanagi. Sorry, but I know how you feel, and I'm much older than you. No more Oni-chan for you, Yanagi. You don't have an Oni-chan face anymore. Yay! <laughs> it was hard not to laugh. Oh, we got a picture of it! Yanagi reluctantly gave the girl his hand which she clutched as tightly as she did mine. <laughs> she laughed so happily, you'd never have guessed she was bawling seconds ago. She wasn't alone anymore, and these nice people would take her to her mother. I'm sure she was smiling out of relief. Good grief. Is this practice for you, Yanagi? <laughs> what a surprise. For some reason, I'd assume that you would be used to dealing with kids. I've never really had the chance to interact with them like this. But even his clumsy method of hand-holding seemed to calm him down. It looked to me like he didn't know quite how much strength to put into his grip. Uncle, uncle, you're so big. You're even bigger than daddy. Uncle again. Hey, hey, are you two a couple? <laughs> That's 
cute. What? That's right, give us some ideas. An unexpected word slipped out of this child's mouth, even though she looked to be only in primary school. Do you even know what that word means? Yeah, couples kiss each other. They're, um, lovey-dovey. Young kids sure know a lot these days. So, are you really a couple? <laughs> no, calm down, she's. Yanagi paused, perhaps to think of a way to explain so that the girl would understand. He was unable to ask his bewilderment. He didn't know what expression to make. Uh, um, we probably look like a family right now, don't we? You are the father, and I... Yanagi was troubled, so I tried to fill the silence when it struck me. If Yanagi was the father, then that made me the mother. In other words... It was a terribly embarrassing image to see at the spur of the moment, if I say so myself. Oh, come on. Come on, stop calling me that. I guess that would make both of you my little sisters. I'd be aunt if your uncle. Isn't she way too young to be your sister? Oh no, don't say that. I was kidding. Don't take it so seriously. Well, you really are like a sister. <sighs> I wasn't sure if I was happy to hear that. It was a complicated feeling. I don't want to be sister's own, no thank you. Internally, I hummed an agreement, and the girl gripped my hand a little tighter. Will you really see mommy? You will. Yanagi answered quickly, as if to dispel his own doubts. I didn't detect a hint of hesitation. Really? Absolutely. You see, uncle is a detective. No matter where she's hiding, or even if she's lost, I'll definitely find your mommy. Really? The girl tilted her head as she looked up at me. <laughs> really, it's the truth. I nodded with a smile, and the girl's face immediately brightened. Uncle is the world's greatest detective, so he can find anybody. Ooh, yay! <laughs> Yanagi watched over the girl with a smile as she cheered up. The sight warmed my heart. Alright, where's this mother at? Uncle! Big sis! Thank you! See you later! Bye-bye! A brief while later, we found the girl's mother. Yanagi sighed while watching the happy family's reunion. So, if I recall correctly, you called me uncle back there, didn't you? Well, I didn't want to call you brother and confuse the poor girl. I guess it wouldn't be odd for a guy that's already 28 years old. Ah, you're just a little spring chicken. Oh, so we're seven years apart. As Yanagi muttered, I realized that our ages were pretty far apart. That's not that far apart. It's barely anything. Oh yeah, for all y'all out there who like to complain about age differences between couples, my mom was 18 and my dad was 28 when I was born, and they're pretty much like the very best parents you could have ever asked for. They were great parents, and they were together for 30 years until my father passed away, and they were a super duper lovey dovey happy couple like, till the very end. They were so adorable that my sisters and I didn't even think it was weird or gross because we were just used to it. So yeah, a 10-year gap in age is nothing as far as couples go. As long as they're both decent people and they care about each other, that's the only thing that matters. Alright, sorry, lecture over. <laughs> I'm a little bit stir-crazy from not sleeping much lately. Maybe that was the reason that Yanagi always struck me as mature. He's reliable, decisive, and kind but he'll walk a lonely path for his desire to protect everything around him. Today, when we were with the lost child, Yanagi had flashed a smile at me that I had never seen him make before. It was a natural smile, the sort he might have made when we still had our everyday lives. He strongly wanted to reclaim that life, even though it required in the metal. I've already thought you were mature, but I guess you're not quite an uncle yet. Burying my genuine thoughts, I tossed off a light-hearted remark. <laughs> I get weird feelings when you praise me like that. What kind of weird feelings? <laughs> it bothers you more than I expected. I'm still on active duty, you know. You'll be okay. You're not retiring anytime soon. Are you enjoying this? <laughs> Seriously. Yanagi shrugged while chuckling just a little bit. Well, I have to admit, though, it did freak me out a lot more turning 30 than it freaked me out when I was turning 40. Well, Hoshino, you know what to do. If anything happens, let me know right away. 
Yes, sir. Good work today. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Mochida left the room to get ready to go home. I watched him leave and then I picked up a file of documents. I was on standby here till morning. Others were working, but it was pretty empty. Man, that has got to wreak some serious havoc on your schedule and your mind and stuff. Having daytime and nighttime shifts all mixed up. Everyone was working, so while the office wasn't abandoned, it was definitely quiet. Not many reports came in today, so we don't have much work. It's good timing. I can dive into the X-Day files. I opened the massive stack of files, planning to review all the cases from the beginning. Huh? What? Suddenly, the station burst into activity. Great, I was just about to get into something. The people that had stayed behind were flustered, and I could hear concerned voices. It's an X-Day homicide. Huh? Anyone who can leave needs to move out now. An next day incident? I hastily opened a web browser and checked the video site. I had to wait a bit for the site to load. Maybe the server was overloaded. And then, the familiar intro played. In the video, there were three people frozen still on what appeared to be a rooftop. All of them were blindfolded. Their footing was extremely precarious, and it looked like they could fall at any time. These people have committed a naughty crime. Did you know that thanks to them, three pitiable people have died? I feel like they missed a line here. Family's reunion is not allowed, but they acted like these things were second natures to them. Yeah, something got missing somewhere in there. Isn't ignorance scary? That's all it takes to kill someone. All of you watching, are you curious about what will happen to them? Are you? I think it's pretty obvious at this point. Anyone with a curious nature would wonder, would they? Obviously, they will receive an appropriate punishment for their crimes. We of Adonis shall dish it out. It looked like a woman's hand to me. Then, a slender hand pushed the people. I thought it looked kind of like a feminine hand, but then again, some of the guys in here's hands look a little feminine. But they said slender, and that sounds like a word you use more to describe women's hands usually. The video ended. This means... A random thought stood out in my head. Something was off. No, deja vu? SRCPO speaking. An next day incident has occurred. Emergency meeting at Investigations HQ. Hurry! Y yes Good thing I hadn't run out then. Good thing I didn't listen to you, panicking guy. And now back on Adonis' side. Ray Mikuni. Who's kinda cute, I like his eyes. Zero. The Enforcer caused another incident. What in the world are you thinking? You understand, don't you? At this rate, any semblance of law and order will vanish. This isn't how we imagined our ideals were going to be expressed. Yes, I realize that we need indomitable power to preserve order. At times, violence is the deterrent that prevents greater evil, and it carries a cost to implement. But this amount is clearly excessive. So many have been hurt and are suffering. Are you really fine with this? I said this from the beginning. I worry that you may not be able to tolerate this much sorrow. To say that suffering is necessary, why must we create any more than is necessary? We've more than adequately shown our power. It seems that your vision already differs from mine. Zero, please, no more. And Zero, your retort? You say nothing? Now we're into chapter three. Wow, it's only been two chapters that we've gone through. I can't believe it. December 12th. It looks like everyone who works in the station is here. Yes, if anyone's missing, it's because they left work already. We're calling them back here. It is quite late now. There's no helping it. In fact, I'm glad we managed to get this many. Let's start the emergency meeting. 
The conference room was full of tension. There was only one reason we gathered this many officers this late at night and to send out a call to all other personnel. A new X-Day crime has occurred. The video that had been broadcast had thrust us into that reality. While we didn't have any evidence yet, the format of the video and the announcement made it seem likely that Adonis was behind it. We're working to determine the crime scene. We don't have any witness information yet. Three people are believed to have been pushed off a building or other high location. It was late at night, but Shinjuku had always had a lot of foot traffic in the evening. It would have been easy to find a witness. But many things have changed now. Very few people ventured outside at night now. Images, statements, transmission source. Don't overlook any detail they've transmitted. Hurry up and pinpoint the location. They've been getting sloppy lately. We already have suspects in custody for the July and August incidents, too. There's bound to be a flaw in their plan. Find it quickly. Analysis, please continue your work. Report any confirmed findings, no matter how trivial it may seem. Contact other local stations. Have them conduct a sweep of Shinjuku's buildings that fit the profile. And the surrounding areas. Yes, sir. Understood. Also, Hoshino. I had the feeling you guys would have something different for me. Y yes I think I yelped aloud in a most embarrassing way. I didn't expect Minigishi to actually call on me while he was issuing orders. Morioko was even more of a surprise. W what could he want from me? Uh, you want me to make some tea? Did anything in particular stand out to you in the video? Uh... Morioka's question prompted everyone in the room to focus their attention on me. I couldn't say that nothing stuck out to me, but I also couldn't quite pinpoint anything. What should I say? I was torn. Was it appropriate to voice the hunch that I had earlier? Let's see. The location might be... Um, it's just a hunch, and there's a good chance that it's off base, but... It could be an important clue that connected the perpetrators. Anything's fine. If you have an idea, spit it out. Y yes sir. I hadn't had time to collect my thoughts. I had to break it down one fact at a time. First, assuming the video is genuine. What do we know about the criminal? It's a... young woman. So I guess I did judge right about the hand. In the video, we can see what appears to be the hand of a young woman pushing the three victims from behind. It appears that she'd be in her late teens or early twenties. Fantastic. Everyone here already knows that. What else do you have? Oh, thanks a lot, Sazaka. Also, something small struck me about the statement in the video. What about it? I thought back to the declaration. The thing that struck me was... Anyone with a curious nature would wonder... The part where she said... Anyone with a curious nature stands out to me. That part. I don't recall that portion of the video as being particularly outstanding. Um, actually, the other evening I happened to bump into a woman who said something similar. That seems unusual. When I think about it, she also had a similar pattern of speech. Why didn't you say anything sooner? Uh, I'm sorry. I only really just put it together now, it seemed like. Calm down, Morioka. It was just a chance encounter, so we're lucky she remembered it at all. Tch. So, Officer Hoshino, what was this woman like? Yeah, I don't even think we got her names. Did we? I don't remember. I don't know if we can even find her again. R right, well... She wore a miniskirt and rabbit ears, that was very clear. She wore a miniskirt and a large hoodie with rabbit ears. It was quite a bold and memorable look. I think she'd probably stand out in town. Add that to the witness accounts. Yes, sir. And where exactly did you happen to meet this woman? Uh... When Minagishi posed this question with such a pensive look, my words stuck in my throat. There was no doubt that she was suspicious, but I couldn't help but think. What if Kazuki was involved? She had said that she was looking forward to the next concert, but... Wasn't Kazuki supposed to be in that one? Kazuki had stayed at the club all night long practicing. Meaning that, even if they weren't acquainted, 
Kazuki had contact. She didn't even say she had any connections with any bands or anything, though. She just said she liked concerts at that particular venue, and that's all. Hoshino, is there a reason you can't tell us? Huh? Returned to reality by Minigishi's dubious tone and Morioka's glare, I shook my head. If I didn't handle this right, I could end up hurting Kazuki. But pardon me, I was just recalling the meeting. It was near the concert club by the east entrance. Do you know the precise location? Yes. Describe it to us in detail, quickly. When we have an address, alert nearby officers. Yes, sir. Understood. Much of our information is still unverified, so we don't know what this will lead to. Let's follow this thread as well. I will let you get to work now. Yes, sir. Hey, Hoshino, where is it? Um, the map says... Mentally recreating the path I took to follow Kazuki, I then quickly compared it to the map they had. Here. Once I indicated the precise location, the exact address was pinpointed. Reports and orders were sent to the area. Then, a composite artist asked me about the girl's features and build, and I filled in as many details as I could remember. Hoshino, get ready to leave immediately. We'll be heading to the concert club area. Yes, sir. I quickly stood in attention in response. Commissioner, a report from the crime scene. Report. Three victims have been discovered. Their builds match the people depicted in the video. All were confirmed dead at the scene. The atmosphere in HQ changed. Once again, a video had announced the crime. And the thing everybody wanted to know right now was... Where? In an abandoned building near the concert club that we identified earlier. Uh, I didn't have to look in a mirror to know that the blood had instantly drained from my face. Kazuki, what are you in the middle of? No reply, huh? I checked my phone before stowing it away. I raised my head and headed to my destination. Adonis's newest statement was uploaded to the internet a little while ago. Hoshino probably noticed it too. As did my entire workplace. Never mind the statement in the profile. This was definitely tied to the woman that we had met by the concert club before. Yep, he realized it much faster than I did. Hoshino is probably telling HQ about it now. Still, this is an unfortunate coincidence. The woman had mentioned an upcoming concert. Hoshino's brother was likely in that concert. He and Hoshino had a tense relationship. If he was involved with this incident, it could very well deepen the divide between brother and sister. What am I thinking? This is no time to worry about that. I steered my thoughts away from the tangent. Solving the case took priority now. That's how it ought to be at least. But it wasn't easy to turn off my feelings. I realized that I was worrying about Hoshino more than I was about the case. I understood why. It was nothing other than my ego. Are you sure about that? I think something else is sprouting in there. That's how it's always been. From the beginning, she had mistaken it for kindness. My worry over her and my desire to protect her were an extension of my selfish feelings. She said she's happy to be used. She had told me to use her and her collar if I could find a use for them. If that's what she truly wished for, then I would adhere to her wishes. Yet, I don't want to hurt her like I did before. I couldn't stop myself from thinking it. It was another aspect of my protective nature. I'm just scared. I didn't want to hurt people, so I didn't want to see her get hurt. But she's already moving forward. Right now, Hoshino was trying her best to carve a way forward on her own. That was why I'd grown attached to her. Just as she wished, I wanted to treat her as a police officer rather than another victim. Maybe I'm actually the one who lacks conviction. I knew that my interference wasn't truly in her best interests. Maybe it would be better not to tread any deeper than I already have. I murmured, as if trying to convince myself. Both for her sake... And for my own. Nah, just go with the flow. 
You're thinking way too deeply on this. When I arrived at the concert club, investigators were milling about the entire area. It would be problematic if I'm spotted. I watched from the shadow of a close building. The crime scene had been identified. I knew this was the place. That meant the suspects were. Hmm. While I was thinking, I received a text. From Hoshino. What am I saying? What? No, I thought he said Hoshino. This is Shiraishi. Oh, are you at the scene yet? <sighs> Alas, my text had come from Shiraishi. My whole body slumped in exasperation. <laughs> of all the people that could have sent him a message. He's obviously enjoying this, as always. I hadn't said a word about coming here. That said, it was business as usual. Shiraishi knew my behavior patterns inside and out. Honestly. Our inseparable bond scared me. Should I just ignore him? It'll be much, much easier to know the relationship between these two once I know Yanagi's past. Don't ignore him. People ignore him too much, poor guy. This was Shiraishi we're talking about. He was probably trying to be patronizing toward me if I hadn't gotten here yet. <sighs> I stopped myself from putting my phone away. Unconsciously, I thought of her again. Right after I had just been scolding myself, I was hopeless. Hopelessly in love? What's Hoshino doing? Don't you mean, what's my star doing? When did anybody ever call her a star? Awfully curious for you to be asking about her straight away. <laughs> Mission failed. I completely taken the bait. Yeah, that really was the wrong thing to ask if he was going to tuck something to Shiraishi, huh? A few days ago, Hoshino and I ran into someone who might be the suspect. They located her with Hoshino's help. They did? Looks like it. Thanks to her, they're already in custody, but... What? I scowled at the way he left it hanging. All I could do was wait for the next text. Wanna know what? <sighs> Shirashi was a huge pain in the ass. Stop screwing around. Huh? You mean the collared kitty? Looks like she's caught Morioka's eye. There's an open investigation now. <laughs> I couldn't help but be frustrated at the way he'd been toying with me. I had to say, it bothered me considerably. Okazaki knew about Hoshino's background. Morioka and the rest of investigations likely knew about her connection to us. That was why they'd allowed her into the fold. So that they could keep an eye on her. Once they learned she met the suspect before, their suspicions would only increase. She was a likely suspect to be a mole, since she was so new to the force. Uh, technically I am a mole too, since I got this collar. <laughs> and it makes it even worse that they invited me into the fold, because they're actually giving me more information. That's going right into that collar. They've arrested a suspect. It might delay Hoshino's interview. Of course. You know... I never said she was the one being investigated. This guy. Morioka doesn't jump to conclusions, but Hoshino's life would be at risk if suspicions revealed her collar. Can you do anything on your end? There was a pause between my text and Shiraishi's next reply. I know you like to fuss over people sometimes, but this is a bit much. What's your relationship to her? as if I could tell him that easily. I'd tell him if I could sum it up in a text. He doesn't know yet. I opted to ignore Shirashi's text and slid my cell phone back into my pocket. Our relationship, huh? She was a partner in an investigation. She was a lead to the criminals. On the surface, that was all she was to me. But the truth was... We're assailant and victim... What? That was closer to the truth. Even if she didn't remember, there was no way I could ever forget. I thought when I was a kid somebody attacked me and he rescued me and beat the crap out of them. Maybe killing them. I wasn't allowed to forget. She was a living reminder of my worst sin. My guilt is simply self-pity. There's no point in forcing it upon her. I shook my head to try and clear the sentiments 
and look straight ahead. Like her, I couldn't do anything but keep moving forward. The building where the murders occurred. There. Observing the police, I managed to ascertain the building the victims were pushed off of. It was cordoned off, so I didn't have access. But I should be able to get a bit closer. I know it's just for me. Even coming all the way out here to the crime scene to try and understand the criminal's thoughts was just out of selfishness in the end. Yes, all the selfless things he does are so selfish. Apparently, the girl we had run into earlier had been detained near the scene of the crime. She wasn't resisting and was heading to Shinjuku Station for questioning, but... Don't touch me! Who do you think you are? There's no evidence Hana did anything. You said so, right? <laughs> you dumb cops. We'll catch anyone that way. Hey, I said let me go! Let me go! Why'd you have to show up and kill the vibe? She wasn't physically resisting, but she was unleashing plenty of verbal hostility. Oh, an uppity chick. <clears throat> Ouch! Hey, what's going on? In the interview room, the girl seemed to wince in pain. Oh, what's happening? My head is suddenly... Huh? And there goes her memories. What's Hana doing here? Her demeanor abruptly shifted. The girl was blinking in surprise, as if the scene was very bizarre to her. <laughs> What's your name? Huh? Who are you, mister? Hajime Morioka, from Investigation Section 1. Huh? Is this a police station? Or you the one that said you'd come to Shinjuku Station to answer our questions? Ah, uh, you said that? It's why you're sitting here now. Anyway, what's your name? I hate my real name. It's so lame. Can't you just call me Hana? Tell me your real name. Aww, Hanako Kobayashi. But I really hate it, so call me Hana, okay? What were you doing so close to the scene? Huh? Scene? What scene? I have no idea what you're talking about. Did you do it? Huh? Did you bring Hana in because Hana's a suspect or something? I'm going to ask you one more time. Did you kill these people? Uh, she looks like she's going to cry now. Huh? Huh? I don't understand. I don't know any of these people. I've never even met them. Why would Hana kill someone she's never ever met before? You might not know this, mister, but the Hana, Hiro is the most important thing in the world. If Hiro knew his fans were killing people, he'd be sad, wouldn't he? That's what you should have thought before you actually killed people. Hana only lives for Hiro, so I'd never ever do that, because I don't want Hiro to be sad. And yet you still ended up doing it, although you forgot all about it. <sighs> Are you sure it's her? I nodded in response to Minagishi's question. The girl Morioka was grilling on the other side of the one-way mirror was definitely the girl I had met in front of the concert club. There's no mistake, it's her, but... What's wrong? Um, when I met her, she was very excited for an upcoming concert. Anyone could sense her genuine enthusiasm, so doesn't it seem odd that someone would commit such a gruesome crime right after that? Right now, all her evidence points to her being the perpetrator. Though, I must admit, she is indeed acting oddly. Come on. Ah, Shiraishi. Just the man for the job. Hello. Don't mind me. Please, let us hear your thoughts. Shirashi entered and stood next to us. His gaze was focused on the scene beyond the one-way mirror. She isn't lying. Huh? After listening to the exchange for a while, Shirashi murmured his assessment. As I thought, so it looks that way to you as well. Yes, her expressions and voice are sincere. In other words, she's dark. That is problematic. I thought we'd managed to get something this time. W what does that mean? Minagishi and Shirashi's conversation confused me. If they were sure that she wasn't lying, how could they conclude that she was guilty? Commissioner Minagishi, may I come in? Yes, please. Now Sakuragawa had decided to join us inside the room. Her expression was stiff. 
What you got for us, girl? What have you discovered? Finger fingerprints found on the packing tape used to blindfold the victims match those of Hanako Kobayashi. Uh. I see. Anything else? We have identified the type of tape used to blindfold the victims. It's exactly the same as the type used in the police officer kidnappings and murders from April and May. The results of Kobayashi's vocal analysis have also been processed. We have identified points of similarity between the latest video and the altered voice from the video broadcast last May. Huh? Oh, brazen of them. At once, tension gripped the room. Sakuragawa's results were incontrovertible evidence that tied Hanako Kobayashi to the X-Day crimes. Alright, we're gonna stop there, cuz. I don't know when it might be a good st I don't know when it might be a good stop point to stop. I like that we're finally getting the actual details of all the X-Day crimes that got committed after those past month crimes this time. I was wondering if that was gonna be in, um, Kay's route or if it was Yanagi's thing, so I guess it's more Yanagi's thing. Well, hope to see you on the next episode or some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do you really signing out? Bye bye, everybody.